Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Today we're not walking because it's pouring out, but we want to get you a video. And today what we're talking about is more and more people are worried about losing their jobs. I, it's like a common, common theme. I'm running into a few people and, you know, and I'm saying, hey, did you close in that house? Did you buy that house? Because no, I'm worried about my job. Or it's just like we go out to dinner with some friends and they're talking about jobs and just what the hell is going on right it's, it's just is it is it i'm self-employed and i can tell you there was a downturn in home inspections but that's because of the real estate market's being right. effective you know people aren't buying right now because they're just nervous and stuff yeah. i mean thank god as home inspectors in florida we have insurance inspections you know what's called four point and winds right. and wind mitigations mm -hmm. and all that stuff you know we have other services which takes care of us but are you running into people that are saying hey you know what job market you know i mean it says it's, i wrote down some notes the likelihood of unemployment has reached 4.4 percent the highest in 10 years wow so unemployment and you know when they revise those numbers they're like hey you know what you know they usually do like on a Friday night at four in the morning yeah. when nobody's, nobody's paying, paying attention. attention. We, we made a mistake. There's actually about 900,000, you know, less jobs created. And my opinion is, I think it's probably double that. Maybe. I mean, what are you feeling there, when it comes to the job There's market? statistics. So at the end of the day, statistics can be a little, depending on how, if you don't know how, the numbers were obtained, then you know, and it's kind of behind the veil. Do you when trust it comes to these do you, numbers? Do you trust the numbers? No, I do don't. Do you guys trust the numbers? No, I absolutely don't. It's because they change them too much. I get things changed, things flex, but this should not be that difficult of a task. It's, yeah. This is how many jobs are we have, and this is how many jobs we don't have. It's it, the, the thing that bothers me when it comes to the employment numbers that I, I never believe them is they, if somebody goes and gets a second job because of inflation and they can't afford anything, oh, there was two jobs. Right, they were filled. Or it's government jobs, you know, so now instead of having one person fill, fill staples, you know, and staplers around the office, now they have 10. Maybe they'll right. have a whole department for it. They could, you know. I know, know. I'm, you know, I'm being a kind of ass but talking about that, things like that. But my point is, real, real jobs. And But they're saying, you know, then they said, oh, for every person that's looking for a job, there's 1.5 jobs available. That sounds good. That does sound good. But they have to be skilled labor. So they're like, hey, you know what? You want to become that welder? You gotta go to school. You gotta go to school. Go to school. Yeah, and we know you're 58, 60 years old, but go to school. It's okay. Go to school. You know, it, it, and I get that. It's it, it, like I said. It just it sounds good and it sounds real easy. But you know, even with us looking into this stuff a little bit, and over the last couple of videos that we've done, it is hard to find a job because you do have to go back to school. Think about it. You've worked your life as in a career, and then you retire, or you're just getting your life started, and you're in your chosen career or your educated career. But now you have to get a second job, and you've got to go do something different. Yeah, and don't forget, like, AI is going to eliminate a lot of jobs. Yeah, most likely. You know, it is. It's going to, I know, accountants, you know, I mean, I couldn't believe how much AI could do the more I look at it. And, like, the, then states, you know, do stupid things, like California. I know I brought this up before, but I, I don't think people think it out, saying, hey, you know what? The fast food workers should make 20 bucks an hour. And I agree with people, okay? I agree, you should make 20 bucks an hour in a free market, you know, if, if the company could afford it. But right. if you force companies, this is my opinion, if you force companies to say, hey, you have to pay this person $20 an hour, what are they gonna do? They're going to probably maybe get rid of you, or they might take a job that three people did, now two people will do it. Yep. Or they might have AI or, you know, a machine take over and cook, like me and you. Okay, we went to Taco Bell. We no, walked. we didn't. No. 
no, yeah. no. <laughs> no. This no. was a long time ago. A long, a long time, time ago. ago. Not recently. Even a long time ago, we had to go in. We hit a tablet. Well, we were more round. <laughs> yeah, we, we did a tablet, and you know, we hit yeah. what we wanted. But look at my pub, like my Publix. Yeah. You know, there's we have. Uh, I want to say it's. I think it's eight, eight lanes. It's you know they're kind of more of the express lane, but it's self checkout, and they have one employee, one or two employees watching those. You know, eight things. My Walmart has that as well. They've got the express checkout where it's, you know, one or two employees watching a, a multitude of registers, obviously with cameras and stuff too, but they're, you know, you're starting to see that consolidation because everybody's trying to find ways to save money, mm -hmm. you know, because the corporation itself has to be profitable. You know, and some of that's obviously the biggest expense for any single company typically is employee. Yeah, what do you guys think? You think the job market? What is it like where you guys are? So basically, according to the notes I did, job satisfaction, wages, and benefits have decreased in July. More Americans are searching for jobs than ever before. Job growth is slow and creating uneasy among workers, you know. It's just all negative. What's 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 a positive? Well, I mean, if you've got a job and you're stable, that's a positive. Um, yeah, but you know, it's it, it's hard. It's because you just don't know. Even if you think the job is going smoothly and well, you just don't know one day when a department. You know, I know some people that worked in um, the bank, not like as a teller, but in the corporate side of the bank doing other things and their department literally just got shut down. It was just, okay, we're shutting this department out. It was like 30 employees, and they consolidated it with another department, and then that department made more money. The people in that department made more money, but they moved those employees over, and they didn't pay them more money. They just gave them twice the work to do now, and their answer was pretty much, be happy that you have a job. Right. You know, because we could just lay you off, but we found work for you, so. But here's the thing with jobs, okay? Yes, okay, you have a steady job, and I think that's freaking great, okay? But inflation is eating away. Yes. And things aren't, like they're saying, okay, the inflation rate's down to 3%, whatever, you know, the goal was 2%, but hey, we're never gonna make it that. But that's on average. There's still some stuff up 40, 50% from three, four years ago. Right, and just because the inflation rate is down, it's the inflation rate the rate at which something goes up. It's already up, it's not like it's going backwards. So the prices that you had three, four years ago, you're not They're gonna, gone. yeah, those are gone. But if something went up 30, 40%, car insurance, houses, I, I, food, meat, bacon, eggs, milk, I can keep going. Yeah. But if, did your salaries go up 30, 40%? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. And people have been trying to cut back. I mean, just look at the restaurants and stuff. It's, I'm noticing less and less people in the restaurants. I'm also noticing portion sizes are being cut back just a little here and there. Um, prices are up. So, you know, I just, it's, it's a tough time for everybody. And then when, when that happens, that affects, you know, when there's less people in the restaurant, as an example, then you start to see less servers. That means somebody doesn't have a job or doesn't have their second job, you yeah. know, that helps support things. So it's tough. You know, it was funny, they did a survey and they said, hey, how much money do you need just to be comfortable and just for the basics? People are saying like 175,000, 185,000. And a good, you know, that's double what the average person will make. Yeah. Somebody with a good job and works their butt off, mm -hmm. okay, is making like, according to these, is 81,000. And I think that's, really really high yeah that is high i would say that more the average i think would be more in the 51 so, thousand range yeah so real wage has been stagnant since 2021 job market slowing mm -hmm. july saw a disappointing job growth of 114,000, mm -hmm. which they'll revise that unemployment rate increased to 4.3 percent economists caution against viewing these signs as a recession indicator why why? <laughs> I just don't understand that. It's because just, they don't want us to think that is a recession indicator. I think we are in a recession. Well, if we keep redefining recession so that we're never into a recession. What is a recession? It's like three quarters of negative growth? I believe so. Something like that. But do you believe those numbers? Do you guys think that we're in a recession or not? 
Okay, layoffs remain muted despite rising unemployment. Yeah, the mainstream media is not talking about layoffs. Right. Okay. Upcoming job reports will provide more insight. The survey indicates a shift in the job market dynamics. Yes, of course. You know, Americans feel less secure about their employment prospects. We already talked about that. Yep. You know, satisfaction with job is declining, even now. It's just, it's just, the stores, it's just everybody is worried about losing their jobs. It's the truth. It's, everybody is, no matter who you are. You just don't know when that could come down. Unless you've got more of a secure job, law enforcement, healthcare, um, emergency services, things like that, those don't typically get cut back. They just pile more on or you do more with less. They don't typically right. lay people off, per se. Um, you know, particularly here in our mm -hmm. area, you know, and I do have a little experience in that world. But, but if I had to go and work in a job, you know, that was just more of a corporate, you know, the, the traditional Monday through Friday, nine to five, you know, there, I'd be a little bit worried because who knows the next day I would be putting my pennies away for sure. You got to save. And you know, that whole, Oh, I got three months saved up to survive. I'd make sure I had a year or more if I possibly could. You'd you know, have to struggle just I, to make we sure. Did, we did two videos. We did a video recently on jobs and, you know, inflation and, you know, people just worried about their jobs because it's such an important, I think, that and I said this in the last video too, and I'm going to repeat it just in case you guys didn't watch the last one. I think that if it doesn't matter who becomes president, mm -hmm. whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, I think the fans are going to hit, you know, come January, February next year. I think 2025, at least the first six months, no matter who's president. It's going to be rough. It's going to be an interesting beginning of the year. Like, no, I don't care who gets into the into the Oval Office. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough beginning of the year because there's going to, that's the transition. So we're either going to keep going down the path that we are, or we're going to maybe hopefully change. Um, yeah, you know. But hopefully, hopefully, things will start to stabilize stabilize out a little bit over the next you know six to ten months. Yeah, right now everything's propped up because of the election. They're not going to let anything you know. Right, and it's hard for me to even fathom like things could get worse. You know, if you're saying well, that they're propped we're, we're, up. Yeah, right now. It's like now, how much more could things cost? For the love of God, I mean, give me a break. Like it's ridiculous. Right now, we go to restaurants. And we're like, we'll never get in there. It's Friday night. And then we go there and, and there's nobody there. There's nobody there. Yeah, I, it's, it, we've done that on the weekends, Vanessa and I. And we go somewhere and we're like, oh, God, the, tr the line, we're going to be waiting an hour and a half because it's peak time. Nope. We just walk right in. Me and Tanya went to a breakfast place and she had chicken chipotle wrap, which is nothing. Yep. And an iced tea. I had a scrambled egg with ham and cheese on a croissant. I'll tell everybody what I'm eating. And no big deal, and a cup of coffee, okay? It was $48. Yep, I know where you go. <laughs> it was 48 bucks. Doesn't then, surprise me. You know, then you leave like, what, a 12 buck tip, whatever, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, so I'm at 50, $52. For an egg and an English muffin. For breakfast. And a cup of coffee. Yeah. And this is why people aren't going out. Because for 58 bucks, you could buy that meal seven times over for both of you and eat for the whole week, seven day week. If you think about it, you know what I mean? A thing of English muffins, an egg, and all the eggs were gone through the roof now too. Jeez. And with kids too, like, you know, like with, with, when my kids come, like Christian's coming again, um, you know, he'll be here probably, he's in Europe now, but once he gets back, um, he's gonna be here and my food bill <laughs> goes up like tremendously uh, yeah the boy can eat he could eat it's not like you know it's not like he goes to the supermarket he can eat. obviously he can eat whatever he wants but it's just like when you people have kids you know it's it's expensive it is it's hard i don't know how people afford it it's it's really really rough right now and i just I, the only thing is just everybody has to hunker down a little bit i don't care what you're spending habits are, how much money you make, um, you know, just 
put some pennies away, make sure you've got enough savings, make sure you've got enough put away and, you know, because we feel like, you know, you and I have talked about it. We pack our lunch a little bit more than we ever used to. We do. You know? Like, we do. We I pack get on our you, lunch. I get on you when we got to go do stuff together for the day. I'm like, I come with my little lunch box. You know, oh, yeah. and we don't go out to eat as much because it's it's expensive. If you really start to add it up, and I, you know, we categorize everything by the month. Well, well, look it's at it. It's crazy. Me and Bill for what eight years now. We go to the same every Wednesday or Thursday. We go to yep. the same Greek. It, it's like a small place to get a gyro, yep. some black or whatever. Yep. You know, it's like a little booth. You know, the best. Uh, it's it's really really good Greek food in Tarpon Springs. But then we went. And we tried a lot of different restaurants, okay? Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Right. But they're expensive. They are. Not the place we go, but... Yeah, not that place, but the, the other, other places. It's a noticeable difference in price. Yeah. And, you know, this place is small. There's not a ton of overhead. Their food is amazing. So we go. But their prices have gone up. They've, you know, because food prices have gone up. So, yeah. But when we, when they go on vacation. So when they're not, when they're not there for a few weeks while they're out of town we go to other places to keep our little routine up and the food's just i don't know it's and it's a lot more money that's for sure and you know obviously i can't get fired because i'm self-employed <laughs> obviously you can't get fired with self-employed right. but at the same time home inspections could dry up which they are yep you know and real estate not it's for slowed. nothing but now probably half my realtors that i've been doing business with that yeah. we've been referring to me for the last three years are gone. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. The market shifted, and hopefully, hopefully they'll come back. That's you know, if you position yourself and you kind of stick to it, you may got to get a part-time job or full-time job for a little bit until you know you kind of muddle out of the out of this this slump. But I really do hope that everybody, you know, I hope everybody stays in. I mean, I honestly, I don't like anybody not to. I don't want anybody to lose their job or not be able to do what they they enjoy and love to do. Well, here's my prediction. Okay, my prediction is the rest of this year for the job market is going to be horrible. They're going to hide the real numbers. Come January, the real numbers will come out, and it's not going to be pretty at all. And then the first six months, you know, people are going to put a lot of Christmas gifts. I think Christmas shopping this year is going to be a lot less people. A lot you think? Less, a lot less Christmas gifts under the you tree. Think? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Usually, I, I would be. I would have gone opposite on that. No, one. I think I, people I, go a little crazy. No, I think this year people are going to go crazy. You know why I'm saying that? Because in the restaurants, the restaurants that were packed, now Aren't they're packed. Empty. You know, it's just. And I talk to the waiters and waitresses. A lot of them know us, and you know, they're like, yeah, they're like, hey, Jimmy, just nobody's coming in anymore. Nobody could afford it. We have to raise our prices. Yeah, no, and rightfully so. I don't, I'm not blaming the restaurants or any business for raising their prices. I mean, that's inflation, and they've got to keep up. And they've got to keep the doors open. Or else they don't have employees, they don't have a business. So they have to make the money with less people. Right. So, yeah, so the rest of this year, not good. The first six months of next year, I think it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> okay, it's a little dramatic. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. At least it's going to be... It's, it's a little... <laughs> All right, a little dramatic. All right. Not a bloodbath. Let's call it a, a hurting. <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> well, tell us what you guys think. But then I think things will get better. But prices basically have to come down because corporations... And, you know, if you put forced things on corporations, they're just going to lay people, more and more people off. Right. So the government is, you know, certain people are saying, proposing, like, we'll just say that you can't do this, you can't raise prices here, you can't raise prices there. <laughs> Nixon tried that on food. It didn't last. and didn't go really well. Prices right. end up going really, really high. Anyways, what do you guys think? You think the job market is going to be better? You think I'm crazy the way I'm thinking or Bill's crazy the way he's thinking? But we really value your opinion. I reply to all the comments. It may take a couple of days, but I do reply to them. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and hit the like button and share. And we will talk to you on the next one. Thank you and have a great day. See you on the next video. Hey, save by the bell. <laughs> See you on the next video. All right, bye. bye.